So this is the second and last of the short refereed papers in a sequence of refereed papers. And uh, Maximilian Gola on analyzing 4 million real world personal knowledge questions. Thanks, Frank. Hello. So my first question is, have you ever forgotten your password? I'm pretty sure some of us did. Um, in the case one can no longer recall the password, one is usually challenged to answer some security questions instead. Those security questions typically refer to the personal memory of the user as they need to be memorable over longer time frames. Thus we call them personal knowledge questions. In a recent project we analyzed 4 million real world personal knowledge questions of a data set that is in contrast to previous work publicly available. So before I start I want to give a short introduction to recap and to agree on some common language what fallback authentication is. And for those of you who are bored they can enjoy those adorable kittens which should be mandatory at every passwords presentation. <laughs> right? <laughs> And for all the others, I want to give a short uh, introduction to fallback authentication. So fallback authentication is used to regain access if the primary means of authentication is lost. So you have forgotten your password and need to access a service. There are different kinds that can be used. For example, as we heard yesterday from Facebook, the out of band communication via email or SMS. Sadly, this is not always applicable. Just the case you want to access an email provider and have forgotten the password for it. Or in my case here in Cambridge there's transport issues, I don't have access for example to receive an SMS or an email. And in the case of our data set there might be privacy issues. You don't want to hand out your mobile phone number or email address. Then there are those personal knowledge questions we want to hear about today and there's already known that they are rather insecure because the answers can be guessed. And there are of course are alternatives which should be more secure like vouching systems, preference questions and there are even implicit memory based solutions. Fallback authentication is quite different to primary authentication in terms for example of memorability. Um, they need to be longer or not memorable in the case of out of band communication. There's heavier rate limiting applied to it and sometimes um, in the case for example of trusted contacts um, you even have to wait 24 hours before you can authenticate. So the time required to authenticate and the rate limiting is quite different to primary authentication. If we consider attack scenarios about against those personal knowledge questions then um, literature knows at least two different attackers. First of all the targeted attack. We have heard of it before. There are prominent examples like the wired outer Matt Honan who got hacked by the use of the personal knowledge questions or the security questions that were in place at Amazon. And the attackers used those information to hack the personal knowledge questions of Apple's iCloud service and this way they um, get access to his account and deleted his computer and everything. And there is this trolling attacker who just tries to attack any possible accounts. He guesses based on uh, population wide statistics and simultaneously attack many accounts. So he really doesn't care um, which account to attack just as much as possible. And there's an in-depth analysis um, from this year about real world personal knowledge questions which is um, based on the work of uh, Ellie Burstein at Google. However, this data set is not publicly available so no one can reproduce the results. In our paper we considered the attack mo ad attacker model of a statistical guessing attack. So we don't um, have any specific knowledge about a specific user and we consider an ideal attacker who knows an approximation of the distribution of the answers. So our security analyst um, considers the lower bound or gives a lower bound security because in practice a real world attacker only have a rough um, approximation of the distribution of the answers. Um, this gives us the, the security against two kinds of attacks. First of all online guessing attacks where you contact the server 
And second, offline guessing attacks where you try to, um, for example, attack a hashed file which is on your local hard disk and you are only limited by your computational power. And if we consider um, those online guessing attacks, we have um, a nice metric. In this example, this lambda one value you can see here, it, it just says that states that um, you have, you're allowed to make one single guess against the service and then you proceed to the next user. And in this case, of course, you, you guess the most likely answer first. And um, in this example, you can uh, compromise up to 3% of um, all accounts. So the lower this number is, the more secure um, or the more resistant you are against online guessing attacks. And in the offline guessing attack um, scenario, you calculate the partial guessing entropy, also known as alpha guesswork. And in this case, the security is given in bits, so the higher this number is, the better. Before I um, proceed, I want to outline my talk. Now we have uh, finished this introduction and we can dive into our data set. Um, after this, I will explain something about robots in this data set and finally state the results. So the data set we considered was um, from a dating website that opened in 2002 and had 37 million users. This number uh, changed depending on the website you visit. For themselves, they state they have over 40 million users, so I really don't know exactly. Um, they had a server breach in July and uh, attackers um, leaked the data they obtained in this um, breach in August <clears throat> via BitTorrent and it contained the databases, the source code of the website, um, credit card transaction logs, and even the inbox of the CEO. So, pretty huge leak. Um, it was over 20 gigabytes, however, we only considered a single table of this um, leak. All the other files were deleted and not used. This file is called MM member table, and you can see in and the table here on, on the slide, we only use this uh, two columns called security questions and security answers. And of course there are other uh, columns, but uh, those were only used for bot filtering and the aggregation of the results. So we consider different age groups and nationalities. Um, the question um, arises who was affected by this leak. Um, there is a map. You can find it online by Juan Alonso, um, who plotted uh, the location of the users, which were also known or also included in the leak. And you can spot there's a huge number of users in Europe, and there's a reason for it. And that's why I have uh, this next slide about the robots. We are now in the third part. Um, to understand what the robots are, one has to understand the business model of this website. So contacting new members of this website um, required credits, so money. And deleting an account on this website also costs money. And Ashley Madison used the bots to send um, fake messages to users to lure them into a communication to earn money, right? And this is another map I found online and it uh, states the, the rate of engagers or bots accounts per country. And you can see a huge number of um, bot accounts in Europe. So this might be the reason why we have seen in, on the other uh, map that there are so many users uh, in Europe. Um, then there was this article by Anneli Newitz who found bot filter criteria we applied to get those out, out of this database. Um, for example, you can use the email address of the user. If it's ending with ashleymedicine.com, then it might be a bot. Then there is a column called BC, which, which stands for bot contact mail chat last time. If this is uh, still the default value, 000, zero, zero, then we can be pretty sure that this is a bot account, as bots do not contact each other. They only contact real users. And there is a column called is host, and host is another word for engager or bot, and this might be also an indicator. If this value is set to one, then um, it might be a bot. 
and there are the IP addresses of the users. And if these IP addresses are home addresses, so private addresses, then they are maybe also bots. However, we did not use it as this information was all, all, only available in the credit card transaction logs and we deleted them and did not use them due to ethical considerations. Um, and there are also positive indicators like not a bot. Um, as we will hear later today, there is a, a bcrypt hash in this leak and if this um, password value, this bcrypt hash, was changed to paid delete or 111, I will never do it again, then we can be pretty sure that this account was a paid account. Someone paid money to delete this account. However, the service provider did not really delete it, just changed the hash to this value, so the user were no longer able to log in. Then there is this question if this is ethical or not. Um, yeah, or in our opinion, this is ethical to do research on this um, data leak. Beca why? Because the data is um, public at this point and we only present aggregated results. So we, we ensure total anonymity of a specific user. However, it's unclear whether the outcome outweigh any potential harm. So in my opinion, you should visit the talk um, to whom it's not concerned today at 5 p.m by um, Alexandra, she will talk more about this and given the example of Ashley Madison. Finally, the results of, of our analysis. Um, first of all, the questions. So we can consider those questions as classics because they're really old and no longer used today or I hope no longer used today. For example, what is your mother's maiden name? What is the name of your high school? Your fo favorite sports team? And yeah, pretty, pretty nice is, the que is this question about the last four digits of your social security number, as this, in our opinion, only applies for the US and not for Europe. But we will see about this later. Um, if we want to have some basic statistics, then our MM table um, contained 32 million entries. However, only 4 million users had personal knowledge questions set. Um, the reason for this, I don't know, maybe um, it, it wasn't mandatory to answer or to provide those answers for the questions. Um, if we have a look at the distribution of the answers, then the mother's maiden name question was the most prominent one. And this, uh, as I already mentioned, four-digit social security number was not that used a lot of the times. Um, about the significance, um, because this is not based but inspired by previous work um, by the already mentioned Ellie Burstein, um, we tried to, to apply the same significance metric as they did. So we used a resampling approach. If you consider, for example, this 900,000 users here, then um, we took a random sample of 10% of the size and test if the values fall in a 5 or 10% error band or not. And this with a probability higher than 98%, higher equal 98%. So if this was not significant, then we printed or plotted this minus symbol and if, if it, the number falls and it's 10% error band, it's uh, italic and otherwise it's simply solid. And now for those of you who are shocked by this table, just remember those adorable kittens and focus on the right hand side of the slide. And for all others, um, this table is important because it provides some context and context is it's important to understand these numbers. So if we have a look at uh, the lambda one value, which, which states that you are only allowed to make one single guess in an online guessing scenario, I highlighted those uh, cells which are important. So you can see it here, here, here. Then we can see this, this, this number is um, pretty consistent over all questions. So the difference in questions cannot be seen if you only have um, one, single, um, one single guess. However, if you consider the lambda 10 value, which states that you're allowed to make up to 10 guesses, 
then we can see that the sports team question is very weak. Like if you're allowed to make 20, uh, 10 guesses against the site, and for any user you can compromise 20%, nearly 20% of all accounts. And what about the difference in nationality? So the origin of the user influences the, the questions, not all of them, but for example the sports question. Um, so the Canada's sports teams are easier to guess than the US ones. And we also um, see this for the offline guessing resistance, which is not plotted here. And in this uh, leak, we found um, a lot of fake social security numbers. So the most popular answer, um, which might be a correct social security number, is 1234. However, it occurred in not 0.01% of the cases, but in 2.23% of the cases. So it must be um, a reason for that. Maybe um, it's fake. The users were not honest. And also popular answers are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 69, 69. And uh, the difference in age, um, we can say that the age of the user influences the, the security of the answers only a little. Um, and here again, the sports team question, um, we can see that um, with increasing age, the answers are easier to guess. And yeah, we don't know the reason for that, but um, this is something with, which we found in the, in the data set. And to have a comparison, um, so all those security or personal knowledge questions um, and slightly more secure than a real world four digit pin that were obtained from an iPhone. Um, however, um, they are all, uh, of course, less secure than passwords or random pins. Yeah, so the takeaway of this is personal knowledge questions only over a low level of security. Um, security depends on the age and origin of the user and, and the sports team question isn't a, a great personal knowledge question at all. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Thank you. might be the case, um, however, we had a look at, um, at the significance and it can be uh, the case, for example, here in Canada, we see that uh, we have uh, less than 100,000 answers for the sports team question, so the sample size is not that big. Um, the number, however, is um, significant at least for this um, lambda 10, uh, sorry, lambda 10 value here. So, so presumably, you, presumably using something completely fictional made up as your favorite sport team is going to be... Can, can be the case, yeah. If I remember correctly, the, the most prominent answer for the sports team question is Maple Leafs, which is an ice hockey um, team or something in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you take Maple Leafs and Leafs to be sort of a similar answer? No, we did not consider it. The only thing we applied was changing all un answers to uppercase. But um, as we were not um, able to, to, or as we did not consider the source code, right, we were unsure about which um, edit distance, for example, or string distance was applied by this website. So it might be that they considered leaves and maple leaves as the same answers, right? So substring, for example. But uh, we did not have a look at it. But the data is public, so you can do this. <laughs> No. Favorite team, especially if I'm Canadian, I'm usually watching probably uh, hockey. There are, this is also one of the answers why maybe Canadian, for example, had less. But 
basically the recommendation of this project is that security questions should not be used or users should be instructed to come up with their own very stable but not answering what they're asking questions. Yeah, I um, don't like to answer this, but um, yeah, okay. <laughs> but in so my opinion, um, they are insecure and should not be used. However, we have a problem if out-of-band communication can't be used. There are use cases where it's not possible to use them. And there are more secure alternatives um, that yeah, can be used instead. So. There, there have been other papers as well, academic papers, looking into security questions. And basically, as far as I can remember, they essentially say that if you are lying you know, to the security questions, you're just making more problems for yourself. And in some cases, lying to security questions will actually decrease security even more. Because if you're supposed to lie, you know, what is your date of birth? And you, you know, just enter in one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four is, you know, in a way, even easier to guess than uh, your real birth, date of birth. Uh, we also had in, in Las Vegas in August, we had a speaker from the US named Jim, Jim Fenton. And he has a website which is, well, basically it's a, a you know, name and shame site for bad security questions. And he's pretty much building up a really nice collection of screenshots of all you know, security questions that you can find at different services and websites just to display the stupidity of these things. So the consensus is that in the password cracking community is basically password security questions or password hints, for that matter, as we saw with Adobe, don't use them, period. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Questions, more questions. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit about this uh, Lambda? Yeah. Um, this was. Doing what? Sorry. And can be used for for evaluating entropy for passwords. So um, this lambda value um, was introduced in this paper. You should have a look at, and uh, it's a pretty simple metric. So. It considers um, the number of guesses you are allowed to make to um, compromise um, the stated percent value of the number of users in a trolling attack. And so you just, in, in this example, if you have um, this number um, of one, then you only allow to make the um, one single guess for an, for an account, right? And um, of course, you guess the most likely answer based on the approximation you have at hand of the distribution of the answers. Okay, so, so uh, the original metric was for password yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, more questions? Um, yeah, there's something on database there, but um, so the type of people using that website can fit a different type of model than most other websites. Do you think you might get different results from, let's say, the passwords you use from password reminders on an email system, for example? Um, I don't think so, because there is um, this paper from this year, and they more or less found the same results. So nationality influences and the age influences, and there are questions that are more secure and less secure, and questions that are more usable and less usable. So I don't think that the service which, are your, which is analyzed influences the, the answers that much. Of course, there might be a difference between an important service and a less important service, but I don't know. For, for security questions, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure about that. But when it comes to passwords themselves, we do know that the, the type of service you're using will influence uh, your choice of passwords. I call them service-specific passwords. Like with Ashley Madison, some of the most common passwords found were fuck you and fuck me. Now, I call that service-specific passwords. <laughs> <laughs> so, more questions? Okay, well done. Thank you, Max Miriam.